Hey guys. <laughs> um, recently I was asked if I did any particular types of exercises or conditioning routines to keep the muscles and my hands, uh, I guess you could say, uh, rough and conditioned for uh, doing the hand drill. Um, outside of my regular practice, no, I don't do any specific types of uh, exercises for that. It's not to say that uh, there aren't exercises that would benefit you um, and help you probably perform the hand drill. It's just that it's just something, you know, hand drill and other types of first and fires, things I've been doing for some time, you know, for years. And I just practice three or four times a week, you know, just to keep my hands conditioned mostly and uh, the muscles responsible for uh, performing the hand drill. Uh, someone asked me if I could come up with things and I'm like, well, <laughs> yes, I probably could come up with some ideas over that and uh, I have come up with a few things. But before I get to that, um, I guess it'd be important to ask, and you know, you need to ask yourself, have you taken the time to condition your hands for the rigors that come with doing the hand drill, you know? If you haven't taken at least three or four weeks, maybe even possibly two months, to condition your hands and the muscles to do uh, the hand drill, then I would suggest starting there, you know? Only start with like a few minutes a day and then build up slowly. You don't want to tear your hands up, you know, because that can lead to bruising in the tissues and creating blisters, and you don't want any of that because that could take weeks to heal. Um, and that being said, if you take the time to properly condition your hands, then you're going to have far fewer troubles, you know, because if you're doing that, you're conditioning the muscles, trust me. Um, I would suggest also probably to watch other people, especially people who are beginners. And if you'll watch them and see how they progress, you might get some pointers there as well. You know, Watching someone who's uh, proficient at doing the hand drill can be somewhat frustrating because you're watching someone who seems to be doing it easy and I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, no it is not. Friction fire is never easy. Um, but that said, you know, take the time to watch people who, who uh, are performing the hand drill. Don't focus so much on, you know, whether or not they're getting an ember or if there's a lot of smoke. What you'd want to watch is their technique, you know. Watch how they start slowly. And then as, you know, from moment to moment and time progresses, you'll see that they start to speed up a little bit and put more downward pressure. You can hear what's going on as well as uh, the increased downward pressure and or speed you can hear that in the wood the set that they're using as well uh, take time to watch that you know don't focus so much on getting an ember and whether or not you're getting a lot of smoke or dust you know or the quality of that in the beginning phases of learning to use the hand drill or any friction fire for that matter you want to learn to perform the movement as you know efficiently as possible you know, nothing can take the place of just good old-fashioned practice in the end. Now, with that said, um, what I'll do is, is I'll get a few things set up and I'll show you some things that you possibly could do, you know, that might be considered somewhat like an exercise, you know, and it might help some trouble areas. But um, give me a few moments and I'll be back. guys I'm back um, the first type of uh, exercise that I thought might be beneficial for someone who's looking to be able to increase their muscles and your ability for doing specifically the hand drill would probably be isometrics now more specifically what an isometric is uh, it's basically you're performing something that's static but you're putting a lot of tension behind it let's say for example you're holding a push-up or holding a barbell in front of you and you're pressing against it but it's not moving and it's fixed and it's static it's just mm, and you're putting a lot of force against it if you'll notice that the joint angle and the muscle length doesn't change it stays in the same predominant position now um, people for years have used isometrics uh, athletes uh, weightlifters I think there was a guy once called uh, I think his name was Alexander Zass 
or Zoss. I'm not really sure what part of the world he was from, but my understanding was this guy could uh, break chains, bend horseshoes, and do all kinds of things uh, with the strength that he had developed from using isometrics. Now, it's <laughs> that's that's a little extreme, you know. I mean, I've heard that he could even bend bars like inside of a some sort of cage or a cell that he was put into. I, I don't know how much of that's true, but I do know that he. He touted them as being uh, the, re the main reason why he was able to develop so much strength. Outside of building strength, I believe they have uh, purposes as well for, uh, or better use for purposes of rehabilitation, especially when someone's had injuries, possibly to the knees, the hips, shoulders, and whatnot. They're very beneficial. There are problems with using isometrics. Um, I've heard that they can increase your blood pressure. Obviously, any kind of uh, strenuous activity like weightlifting and whatnot can, so you need to be careful while doing these and it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to warm yourself up. If you're going to be doing this with uh, the hand drill, I would suggest starting out with like arm circles and then gradually increase the range of motion, get some blood flowing into the joint area and the muscles themselves, doing even circles like this just to get the elbows warmed up. Maybe this, this would warm up the supinating and the pronating uh, joint inside the elbow and eventually just working maybe possibly even some wrist circles. You'll want to get the blood flowing, that's the point, you know, before you do any kind of uh, exercise. And I'm not a trainer, I don't do that. Um, I don't take any responsibility if you injure yourself doing these things. I'm just saying, you know, be careful with anything that you do. But with that said, what I would recommend doing is, as far as the hand drill is concerned, probably, Give me one second here. Okay, one of the first things that you'd want to do is uh, doing or while performing isometrics um, would be to take measurements. Uh, from my understanding, in order for isometrics to be beneficial to you, uh, especially if you're trying to increase your ability doing anything either athletically or something like a skill like the hand drill, would be to take a, a measurement of your maximal force, the maximum amount of force that you can deliver, say within a given range of motion. You're not going to be working with maximal forces or poundages, you're basically going to be working with submaximal because like I've said before, uh, isometrics, uh, they can be <laughs> detrimental as much as beneficial. Um, performing them all the time at maximal, you know, amount of force that you can deliver can increase your blood pressure uh, and mess with your cardiovascular system. Also, it can tax the nervous system. Uh, you don't want to do that because it could take months to, uh, to rehab yourself from uh, taxing your central nervous system. Uh, not only that, but it could open you up to injuries as well. But anyway, what I would do and recommend doing based off of what I've read about isometrics is uh, you would take a specific movement. Here we're going to focus on the hand drill. And you're going to take, put you a scale. I don't have a scale today. That I'm sorry, I have no idea how much poundage I can deliver going down the hand drill. I have no idea. We're going to start though and just use a top number. We're going to say 10 pounds. Now, what you would do start at the top. We'll say that your absolute maximum that you can press down is 10 pounds. Maybe take two or three readings at this range. Next what you want to do is move down a hand width space down. You're going to press right there as hard as you can. Let's say this one's nine pounds. As you go down I'm thinking that the numbers are probably going to get lower. You're not going to be at 10 pounds like you were up here because you can deliver a lot more force up here than you can down here. But each time you move down, take a reading. You're going to move down a hand width. Take another reading. We'll say it's 10, 10 pounds here, that it's 9 here, and it's possibly 8 here, and it may be like 6 or 7 pounds at the bottom. The maximum amount that you can do in various positions on the spindle. Now, what you can do if you tested yourself that day in all the various ranges down that spindle 
So what you're going to do is just, you know, finish the day just by doing passes, if that's what you've been working on. You know, practice at light to moderate intensity for a few minutes, and then, you know, take your day off, and then you're going to come back. And when you come back, how you would begin your routine using isometrics. You would start it with that. Make sure you warm up again. And then what you do is you'd start at the top position. Remember that it was uh, your maximum was 10? We're going to go sub-maximum. You would start at like 7 to 8 pounds. And you're going to hold that by looking at your skill for about 5, maybe 6 seconds. You're going to take a few moments of a break. You're going to move down a hand width. And remember it was like what? Whatever you recorded. We'll say it was 8 pounds. Or 9, or 9 or 8 pounds. You're going to go sub-max that. You're going to go like 6 to 7 pounds. And you're going to bear down on that and hold it for about 6 possibly seven seconds or something like that. And then you're going to take a few moments rest. You're going to do that the length of the spindle. Because understand this, when you're using isometrics, you need to work the isometrics, the full length of the movement that you're hoping to improve. Each time you come back, you want to either increase either the amount of force that you're delivering and or you'll want to increase the amount of time that you're holding the contraction. I think that what I, from what I've read, 10 seconds should be enough. And you're looking to increase your time or force downward over a period of time. You want to do that slowly. I'd say do this no more than probably two or three times a week. And include that with your hand drill practice sessions. Another uh, exercise that you could possibly do would be to practice either your passes as you go down the spindle and or your floating technique with submaximal uh, poundages or pressure over a period of time. Now what you could do is let's say that you've been practicing floating hands and you've noticed that when you're practicing floating hands that the maximal force that you can deliver we'll just give it a top number is 10 pounds that you can't you cannot sustain that for more than like maybe four or five seconds before you give out well what you can do is is we're going to go sub maximal that let's say that you can practice floating hands at six to seven pounds for about 30 to 35 seconds that's pretty good what you would do is, is you would do that for about 30, 35 seconds, take a rest for probably a minute or so, go back and do another 30, maybe 35 second practice period or session, and just continue on in that manner. What you would do each time is include a few more seconds at say the six, seven pounds. Say that's as much as you can do in that 30, 35 seconds. Is six, seven pounds of force being applied now. Over a period of time, what you'd want to do is say, like, you get up to a minute, so you've got three sets of a minute practiced at seven pounds. You'd want to try to increase that to like seven and a half to eight pounds and see if you can work up to doing three one minute sets. I mean, you can, you can make these um, practice sessions however you want. The point is, is that you're either increasing your downward force and the time spent doing it. And if you can increase those, yes, you are, I guess, getting better at doing the movement. But uh, that is another suggestion. Hey guys, back again. Sorry for so many short clips here. Um, one of the people that was interested in also being able to develop, uh, I guess you could say muscles, uh, or specific strength for doing the hand drill said, is there a way to add resistance to doing the hand drill? That way it would force you to use more muscular power. Now, yes, I have come up with something, but understand this, I think that it's best to be as relaxed as possible when performing the hand drill. Because even if you do learn to use uh, these exercises, you utilize them and put them to good use, and they do benefit you somehow, and that's good if they do, uh, understand this, I believe it's probably best to learn to relax as you're doing the hand drill. And that's what I do. I mean, I never try to force it. I don't try to go as fast as I can. I don't try to, you know, break any world records or anything like that. It's not my thing. Uh, that I'm getting an ember, that, you know, I'm using proper form, uh, 
I'm just having a good time. That's those are those are important to me, you know. But um, anything that you do that increases, uh, say, like your strength <laughs> within a given range or doing a specific type of activity, uh, understand that you need to be able to transfer that to the task that you hope to get better at. If you cannot transfer um, any sort of, uh, I guess you could say, benefits from exercise to what you're doing, you have to ask yourself, is this really even worth doing at all? You know, I'll leave that up to you. The next one, I did come up with something for increasing tension while you're attempting to do um, the hand drill. Now, I will show that in the clip, and then, you know, I'll include a few notes at the end or uh, uh, suggestions, <laughs> whatever it is that uh, um, it might help you even further. I don't know. But uh, anyway, let me run this clip, and you'll see what I've come up with. Okay guys, I'm back. Now, what I've done is, is I've rigged a, uh, some bungee cords up here from a beam near the ceiling up here. And the idea is, is that when you stretch them, as you're pulling them down, they will resist what it is that you're trying to do. In this instance, the hand drill. So I'm going to bring the camera up. know if you can see this but you can see they're up here like so and as you pull down the tension gets higher on them and that's how your elastic bands work what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull them down see if we can put them on my wrist and as I'm performing the hand drill it's going to be harder to keep the spindle in the notch as I'm performing the hand drill so give me a second get the general idea and those particular uh, strands they're rated at pretty high tension I think these up here are about 120 pounds uh, obviously <laughs> you wouldn't want to use something that high probably a lot lower probably even half of that it would resist uh, you doing the hand drill and you would have to use a lot more force to be able to perform either floating hands or traditional passes um, but it would probably increase the muscles or the strength of the muscles responsible for doing the hand drill but uh, the best way to uh, get better at the hand drill is just to perform the hand drill itself and if you do any of these exercises hopefully there is some sort of uh, transference of the strength and stamina that you build uh, that transfers I guess is what I'm trying to say to the hand drill because if it's not working for you then you probably shouldn't be doing it Hey guys, I'm back. Um, something else that I wanted to pass on to you, uh, something that you might try, uh, would be to um, perform the hand drill with uh, more difficult material or even more difficult material than you're used to using. Say, if you've been using a specific set with softer materials, try using something like wood to do the hand drill with. And uh, it's, it's more difficult to work with than just your you know, standard weeds or plants that are soft, pithy, you want to perform it with something more solid. And you'll find that uh, by performing your hand drill with something more difficult uh, um, will make your easier sets, or should, <laughs> seem easier to get an ember with. And there are different ways of doing things. You know, in the end, you have to remember that nothing will supplant good old-fashioned practice, and, you know, lots of it. It's practice, practice, practice. You know, there are all kinds of uh, materials out there that you can work with. Uh, 
I've given you some ideas with some exercises. Uh, whether or not they're actually necessary, uh, that remains to be seen. You know, I mean, shoot me a private message. Let me know how these things are working out for you. You know, um, other than that, you know, there's not a whole lot more that I can say as far as uh, increasing your strength. You know, but let's just hope that those work for you. And uh, all the best spinning. Have a good day.